Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. Today in this video I will talk about different integration schemes and integration architectures which are being followed in order to integrate two or more heterogeneous applications and systems. I will talk about point-to-point -point integration model, how hub and spoke integration architecture works and also I will explain about ESB architecture. I will also explain pros and cons associated with each model and what are the shortcomings in any of these integration architecture. Before I proceed, I would request you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before so that you are able to get latest videos from the channel as and when they are uploaded. Point-to-point -point integration model or architecture is the oldest architecture and oldest integration scheme which has been followed. In case of point-to-point -point integration, if we have multiple applications which want to communicate or integrate with each other, integration logic has to be implemented on each and every application with respect to the other integration party. For example, if we have an application with the name application A and if it wants to integrate with an application B and an application C, then it's important that all the logic for translation, transformation, content routing and any other protocol related information must be implemented in application A with respect to the protocols and supported data models of application B and application C. Similarly, if you plug in more applications like application D, application E and application F. So now it's responsibility for each and every integrating application to ensure that it's capable of integrating and it's capable of sending data and receiving data to and from other application to which is it's being integrated. This type of model is a very old model and this type of integration works fine when we have less number of uh, integration parties or integration systems and also it's fine when we have limited number of uh, data being transferred. Although point-to-point -point integration may work fine with a small scale uh, integration ecosystem with limited number of uh, applications or system being integrated and with less number of uh, data being transmitted across the applications or systems, still there are certain problems and shortcomings associated with point-to-point -point integration model. The first problem with point-to-point -point integration is that you have to uh, manage and you have to write integration logic on every application that's on every end system. So with this uh, way of uh, integration uh, across multiple systems and multiple ap applications, it results into a spaghetti architecture where you have to make sure that you, each and every endpoint is capable of uh, doing all the integration related uh, transformations, translation and data format changes uh, with respect to other applications. And this results in a really problematic situation when you have a growing number of uh, uh, systems or applications being glued up into overall integration ecosystem. And uh, with this uh, type of model where you have a lot of integration logic on your end systems, uh, performance is also impacted. Because ideally end systems are mean to uh, ensure that they are able and capable to do all the business logic and business related uh, uh, functionalities but if you have a lot of integration uh, related uh, code and integration re related logic residing in each and every end system then it has certain impacts and implications in terms of performance also when you have this type of in integration model where you have every end system responsible for making sure that it is able to do the necessary transformations necessary translations uh, related to protocol, related to data types that are accepted and supported by other applications and systems, then it becomes very difficult to scale as well. And in terms of scalability, such a system and such an integration model doesn't fit well into the organizations where they where we have to deal with a, a huge and bulk of data and a huge set of integration uh, systems have to be integrated. And also with this point-to-point -point integration model, it becomes very difficult to enforce standards across the uh, integrated applications and systems. The reason is that uh, there might be different logic and different uh, uh, specifications and different 
uh, type of uh, uh, problems and uh, and uh, capabilities associated with each end system for example one end system might be supporting some different type of protocols and different type of uh, conversion logics for data while another end system might have a different uh, uh, logic and different uh, type of implementation associated with data transformation data translation and data enrichment so in this type of situation you have to deal with the standards uh, separately and individually on each and every end system and it becomes very difficult to have a single standard to be followed across all the integration parties with all these problems and shortcomings associated with point to point integration architecture there is a advanced and more sophisticated uh, type of architecture which comes into picture which is hub and spoke architecture so this hub and spoke architecture uh, basically uh, uh, deals with the uh, problems associated with point to point uh, integration model by introducing a central broker or a central hub which is responsible for uh, ensuring that all the systems or applications are able to communicate with each other so in this type of model all the systems like uh, if you have uh, system a system b system c system d system e and system f all these system will not be communicating directly with each other rather they will be uh, these uh, end systems or these spokes will have adapters and they will be able to communicate to the central broker and this message oriented middleware mom will be responsible for doing all the filtering all the translation transformation and content based routing to make sure that integration works well uh, across all these systems as we have issues uh, and certain shortcomings associated with the point to point integration so is the case with hub and spoke integration as uh, we have successfully resolved the problem of uh, spaghetti architecture by introducing a centralized uh, uh, broker or a centralized hub in hub and spoke integration architecture but now a new problem has arisen the problem is that now we have a single point of failure if hub which is our broker or uh, middleware it goes down then this results into a complete failure of all the integration across multiple applications and mach machines which are communicating through this broker and uh, also it results into performance overhead with the growth and with the with the addition of more and more uh, applications and system into the integration ecosystem although there are certain ways to uh, avoid this type of problem by introduction of uh, federated uh, hubs where we don't have a single hub uh, or we don't have a single broker to deal with all of the integration and also uh, for the performance overhead we can deal with it by introducing more sophisticated hardware and software to make sure that we don't uh, get uh, any glitches in performance but still these problems uh, exist even if we uh, deal with these issues with federation of uh, hubs and also with the increase uh, in the overall uh, resources of our hub uh, architecture and that's why we will be moving towards another more sophisticated and more advanced approach to deal with all the problems which are associated with point to point integration and hub and spoke integration so in order to uh, mitigate all the issues and all the concerns and shortcomings which are associated with the previously explained two models there is a more sophisticated and a more advanced concept which is introduction of enterprise service bus so with this enterprise service bus esb based uh, architecture which is based on uh, on the concept of a centralized messaging backbone or a uh, messaging bus we uh, we uh, are in a position to avoid certain issues and shortcomings which were uh, uh, there in the previous uh, architectures in esp model all the systems which are going to uh, communicate or which are going to integrate with each other to transfer the data have their integration engine and adapters in each end system so these smart end systems publish their data to the service bus and then this service bus is responsible for doing all the uh, all the functionality related to transfer of data to the respective parties and respective end systems 
this ESP model is more sophisticated and we have a lot of uh, implementations uh, proprietary as well as open source ESP implementations available in the market which are used to deal with all the integration issues related to the previous two models. So the question rises that uh, what are the pros and what are the features which, which are associated with ESBs uh, for which we should consider using ESBs in, in any integration platform. The first and the most important thing about ESB architecture is that it's based on service oriented architecture and it follows SOA principles. We have uh, certain uh, SOA principles. Uh, there are eight SOA principles. So most of the ESB implementations which are available in the market, uh, either proprietary or open source, they are uh, based on SOA principles. And with the SOA governance and with by following all these principles of service oriented architecture, we are in a position to better utilize the concepts and to make sure that our ESP model fits into any organization's need to have efficient and more uh, uh, suitable type of integration uh, stream to communicate, to integrate and to enable communication uh, across all the systems and applications. These ESPs are also lightweight in nature and they are distributed. So with this lightweightness and distributed architectures, uh, the applications and systems which are being integrated are highly decoupled. And with this decoupling, uh, you are in a position to easily plug and play any of the applications or systems into your overall uh, integration model and, uh, and the, the, there is less and uh, ideally no impact on any other integration integrating application whenever you plug in or plug out any of the application. So this is it and there are a lot of uh, ESPs uh, available in the market. Some of them are proprietary and some of them are open source. You can have a look on those. For example, we have uh, in the market Chipco ESB, Mule ESB, uh, WSO2 also provides ESB and there are certain other vendors and, pro uh, and companies which are also uh, are selling their ESP uh, products and offerings in the market. So overall, uh, as of now, majority of the organizations uh, with mission critical, data critical and time critical integrations of different systems, whether on premise or on cloud, are utilizing these ESPs in order to have more have seamless and efficient integration of different uh, applications and systems and to better utilize all the data that is available across uh, different machines and different applications in their uh, organizations. So I hope that uh, this uh, uh, video is useful for you and uh, if you like this video and if you want more videos like this in future please subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions or anything to add on please comment below in the comment section and I will try my best to respond to your questions and uh, get back to you. Thank you.